I am Taylor Smeryl, and this is Neat. Uh, welcome to uh, the companion video to our Calvados episode. Now, for a quick rundown, whether you want to listen to the podcast or not, uh, Calvados is a an apple-based brandy, sometimes pears, are involved, uh, from Normandy in France. Um, and then the other spirit we discussed was Pomo, which is basically when you take that same Calvados uh, and mix it with some fermented cider. We're gonna be making one drink with each. Uh, we are going to be starting with this beautiful Calvados Pédouge. All right, so France is really good at quality controlling their delicious stuff, and they do that through something called appellations. What that means is in order to call something Calvados Pédouge, you have to follow certain rules and make it in a certain way. There are really like three main categories in Calvados production, but this is the most highly regulated and by proxy, the most prized. Now, when you see this on a label, for those in the know, you already know a couple things up front. You know it's gonna be aged three years. This also says that there, but shh, I already knew that. Uh, you know it's gonna be aged in oak, and most importantly, you know it's gonna be made in an alembic pot still. It's the same still that's used to make cognac, and it allows a bit more residual funky fruitiness in the final product, whereas the other two appellations of Calvados uh, can be made in pot stills, but are usually made in column stills. So this happens to be my favorite appellation type of Calvados, uh, so that's what I'm gonna be working with. And the drink we're gonna be making with it is one that we talked about. It's a traditional preparation of Calvados uh, called the Troll Normand or the Normand Hole. Um, what that is, is basically like a intermezzo course. So you're having a multi-course meal and they want to give you something to keep your appetite going between courses. So uh, in this case, you'd get a little dish of Calvados and Sorbet. That sounds great. So what we're going to do is take that core concept and then we're going to top it with some dry white cider. Bubbles would work great here if you're, you know, if you want to use some cava or prosecco. The, uh, the Tol Normand is traditionally made with pear or apple sorbet, and I wanted a place to put in some acidity into this drink, so I decided to go with a lemon sorbet and then bring back in the apple quotient with my cider. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I just pre-softened some uh, sorbet here. I'm just gonna put eh, about an ounce. I want it to be about equal to how much Calvados so I'm gonna put in here, which, as stated, then put an ounce. Calvados is made from apple. Get a little bit of a stir. Uh, working with sorbet is awesome because it's like, it provides you your dilution and your sweetness and your chill and uh, it's just all in one product. So you could probably take the same format and sub in different base spirits and different sorbets and just go to town with it. So I'm just topping it uh, about three, four ounces, about four ounces of, like I said, dry white cider. This is the Wolfer cider. They're known for their rosé, but they have really great red cider and this white one that I just super am into. Um, for garnish, I'm gonna go classic on this. I'm just gonna do a lemon twist. This is kind of like a French 75-ish preparation, but with like just no work. All right, here we go. Here is our little play on a trop normand. Mm. That is so nice. It is just, uh, it's very light. It's not too boozy at all. Um, it's definitely very apple forward, but it has some nice complexity. The sorbet adds a really surprising amount of citrus for something that's not, you know, fresh citrus. Uh, yeah. This would be a great brunch cocktail. Um, great, like, light aperitif uh, and super easy to make. All right, so for our next drink, we're going to be working with the pomo, which, as I mentioned before, pomo is a blend of Calvados and um, fermented unfiltered cider. Uh, this one happens to be made from 25% Calvados, 75% cider. So it is definitely uh, low ABV, this is like 16%. I'll be honest, my biggest 
uh, struggle with this spirit, working it into a cocktail, is that it's so good on its own. You could buy this, put it on the rocks with maybe some bitters, maybe a few dashes of mango and a twist, and you got a cocktail ready to go. It's delicious on its own. It's the perfect, like, no fuss, uh, just, just bottled and ready to go spirit if you want, if that's what you're looking for. Obviously, this is a cocktail show, so I gotta make you a cocktail. One way of designing a drink, I think, is to just kind of focus on the ingredient and almost take it in a culinary direction, like what pairs well with this in food usually will pair well with this in drink. Um, and definitely with something like apple, it's no exception. So what goes well with apple, flavor-wise? Uh, spices, obviously. You, you can do this in a lot of ways. Uh, the simple ways like bitters, Angostura bitters, super basic, super easy. But I happen to have a big, big place in my heart for something called pimento dram. If that sounds gross to you, that's just because you might not fully understand what pimento means. <laughs> pimento is just allspice. Uh, they're the same thing um, in this sense. And pimento dram is just a mix of allspice berries, cloves, nutmegs, sometimes cinnamon. Uh, in this case, it has a base of a pot still uh, Jamaican rum. So that part is important. I'm gonna come back to that. It has a really strong spice quality. Um, you can't use a lot of it in a drink without your final product tasting like a, um, an air freshener, uh, but a few dashes goes a long way. So I'm gonna be using this in the drink, but I've already put it into a dosing bottle to get ready. Uh, if this dosing bottle looks familiar to you, perhaps you've seen it on a salad bar. Uh, yeah, they're really fancy dosing bottles you can buy for cocktail bitters, um, but these are a lot cheaper and they work really well. Hack, hack, maybe. Uh, another flavor that pairs great with apples is nuttiness, right? Um, but the problem is a lot of nut liqueurs, and there are so many great ones, you know, you've got Frangelico, you've got Amaretto, uh, a lot of those have a lot of sweetness too. And the thing about this Pomo, it kind of has all the sweetness I want to deal with. So instead, I went with sherry. Sherry, which is fortified wine, is a great way of introducing a nice, nutty, warm backbone to your cocktail without adding a nut-based liqueur. Well, sherry can be really dry, like with a fino sherry. Sherry can be in incredibly sweet and syrupy in the realms of like Pedro Jimenez or cream sherry. This is a medium sherry. This is an Amontillado. Um, an Oloroso would also work great here. And then the final ingredient, because I do think we're gonna need a bit of a boost in the uh, base spirit category here. We just have a little bit of Calvado so far. So for that, I'm gonna bring in some Mount Gay Black Barrel. Now this is an obvious choice considering all the other ingredients because it is both aged in uh, bourbon barrels, which are oak barrels, so we have that you know, reference back to the oak used for the Calvados. It's also made partially from a pot still rum. So we have that in, in common both with the type of still used to make the Calvados and the rum that's the base for my dram. It all makes sense. So let's make a drink. So this is gonna be an easy drink to make. You're gonna build it in the glass. Uh, we're just gonna use two dashes of our pimento dram. I'm gonna use an ounce and a half of my Pomo because uh, I, I want this to be Pomo forward still. Then I'm going to do an ounce each of my sherry and my rum. Ooh, I can just smell it. it. Smells like the season, everybody. There's little pumpkins here. A few pumpkins, I got apples. Sorry, pumpkins, I really do like you. All right, there's our ounce of rum. Just gonna stir this over a big old rack. And now, once again, for the garnish on this, I'm gonna go kind of basic. I'm gonna just go with an orange twist. Um, you could definitely, you know, you could, you could get creative with this. I think like a fresh, like cinnamon orange chip would be really cute. Uh, you know, some, like a dusting of nutmeg would I think work really well on this drink. But I wouldn't discredit the very simple orange twist because one thing this drink doesn't have is a lot of bright acidity and this is gonna give us that. 
And there we go. And it tastes good to boot. You know, as far as how I would categorize this with other drinks, um, it might kind of look like an old fashioned build or even like a Manhattan build. It maybe is closer to like a Manhattan play in the, the breakdown of like spirit versus like bitterness and like on the palate. Um, but it's very, it's very nicely balanced. It's very warm. It's very sweet up front and then finishes nice and dry and nutty. Uh, I think it's a, just a really beautiful fall cocktail. Uh, if you come across Pomo, and also if you can't find Pomo, but you can find Calvados, Pomo is once again a blend of cider and Calvados. So you could probably make a good proxy at home. Uh, Pomo is a little bit harder to find than Calvados, I understand. But there you go. So those are our two cocktails for our Calvados episode. Uh, thank you so much for joining me as always. Uh, if you would like to tweet at us, uh, any ideas, questions, whatever, what have you, uh, we are Neat Boozecast on Twitter. We are also Neat Boozecast on Instagram. Please follow us. And our Gmail is neatboozecast at gmail.com. Uh, we also have a Patreon. It'd be psyched if you join. Thank you, Absurdist, for our music. I have been Taylor Smurl, and uh, this has been Neat. Go, uh, Go drink some apples. I was looking for a pun, it wasn't there, so I said go drink some apples. Why, why do you let me do this?